It is 943 on this Monday. Global Math Week starts this week. Yes, our favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you had thing. it marked on your calendar. Yes, uh, anyway. If not tattooed on your back. <laughs> yeah. If you're not the best at solving problems, you're definitely not alone. But now a Valley Man here joining us this morning, launching this new project to try to change the way that we all look at math. Yeah, joining us is James Tanton, who is a Princeton grad and a mathematician at large for the Mathematical Association of America. And this is this Global Math Week? Tomorrow is Global Math Week, 10-10-2017. And can you guess why we chose 10-10 as the date? Tell us. Well, it's palindromic, and I grew up in Australia. I would read that as the 10th of October, whereas Americans would read that as October, October 10th. 10. No matter where you come from, you'll get it right. <laughs> That's the point. You'll agree That's on that point. Day. I like that. That's though great. Though we did fail on math. In America, it's math. Of course, where I grew up in Australia, it was math. So how do you do with the S or not S? So, okay, we gave so, away on that so one. So the question is, I mean, we're even poking fun of math and talking about how difficult it is in the lead-in here. Yeah. How, how do we make it fun for yeah. kids? Well, the real question is, I mean, mathematics has been an enterprise that's really intrigued, delighted, uplifted mankind for literally thousands of years. And most people won't say that about their school math experience. Mm -hmm. So let's do the same thing. Why is math actually um, not seen as a beautiful human story that mm -hmm. actually is poetry for the mind, poetry for the soul? Wow. You know, we teach poetry for the sake of the joy of it. Right. Let's teach math also for the joy. Yes, you do need computation. Yes, there are math skills out there. But we forget our kids are on a journey that goes from K through 6. You'll learn all your basic arithmetic. Then it keeps going 6 through 8, 8 through 12, to college. There's a whole story on math. Let's bring the human story of math to the world. Well, there's such a disparity between, I guess, the, the math studies of, say, one student who is advanced and is going to go all the way through uh, to a high level of mathematics and one who's going to maybe just meet the basic requirements. So how do we uh, broaden well, that out? And so this, the thing is, let's make mathematics seen as it truly is, okay. a human accessible experience. And I mean it human in many, many senses. It is a human story. The history of mathematics is a human personal experience as you go through your own journey. And the mathematics itself is its own story. So let me, let me, go, let me give you an example at the very, very beginning. We humans are obsessed with the number 10 on matters of counting and arithmetic. Why? Why do we like the number 10 so much? Because it's literally our humanness. We are born with this. So we even call these things digits, and we call numbers digits. We are so obsessed with our human physiology. They will tell you there are some cultures that are actually base 20. So why were they thinking base 20? Hmm. Well, they must have been thinking fingers and uh, you've got it, toes. <laughs> Absolutely. They're more flexible than we are and here by in the, the way, US. And it's still in with us today. I happen to be an American now. I'm Australian, but I'm now in this country. Abraham Lincoln gave a very famous address, the Gettysburg Address. How did, how did it begin? Four score. Four score and seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, how many years ago was that actually? Forty. Four score and seven. Four twenties and seven. He was speaking base oh. 20 right then. Oh, which is was. very curious. And he keeps going. <laughs> many parts of the world think there's a very good way to count to 12 on one hand. Parts of Southeast Asia, parts of India. Yes, they've got a pointer. You notice each finger is broken into three sections. A lot of the world counts this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, oh. 10, 11, 12. Okay. Lots of people go base 12 because of this. Wow. And it still keeps going. The story keeps going. <laughs> Think about you know, weights and measures. How many inches are in a foot? 12. 12. When you go to a bakery, we always do things in groups of dozens. Mm -hmm. As a baker's dozen. A baker's dozen. <laughs> Why 12? Why does the world actually like 12? Because in matters of trade, 12 is a very handy number. When you do basic fractions, like half of something, a third of something, a quarter of something, 12 is a very friendly number. 10 is lousy. <laughs> 10 is lousy for trade. So uh, we're, we're out of time, but how do people find out more about the project? Just and... go to the globalmathproject.org. Okay. You can actually take part in the joyous human story. See, what I just did now, the very beginning, actually is a story that starts at kindergarten and goes to even unsolved graduate research work wow. in one hour. I want to be part of the joyous I know human it. story, all don't I can, you? All I can say is, as an adult, all the time I come across math things, and I'm like, I wish I would have learned that better when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, just context and joy. That's what all we're trying to bring to the world. And we have 890,000 students from 105 countries already signed up to take part in this Fantastic. major global conversation. Wow. It's really quite the phenomenon. That is That's great. That's very cool. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Oh, my pleasure. Come by anytime. April's a fan of math. April?